This is Kung Pao Enter the Minute, Minute 22. Opening fray. Wimplo, his hands slightly lower now, but still with a serious expression on his face, like he truly believes he's going to win this fight. Now we'll learn who's the best. Both Wimplo and the Chosen One move into a fighting stance, both representing the Crane School and the Tiger School styles, respectively. We quickly cut to Wimplo starting the attack, but the Chosen One effortlessly blocks him before jumping over him and landing a kick to Wimplo's face. Wimplo, still standing, fumbles a few steps backwards with blood starting to pour from his nose, his squeaky shoes assisting him. Undeterred, Wimplo quickly recovers to another fighting stance and proclaims, Face the foot style, how'd you like it? To which the Chosen One responds, I'm sure on some planet your style is quite impressive, but your weak link is, this is Earth. Confidently, Wimplo tells the Chosen One about his next move. Oh yeah, try my nuts to your fist style. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Thankfully, we do not see the move connect quiet there. But the impact is enough that Wimplo is pushed away as he falls to the ground. As Wimplo gets up for another, assumedly fruitless attack, Ling steps out from behind a statue and cries out, Please stop! Wimplo sucks as a fighter! A child could beat him! The Chosen One has managed to grab the flailing Wimplo by the car and tells Ling, Well, I'm gonna count to three, and if I hear one more friggin' squeak, I'm gonna take his shoes and shove him up. Thankfully, we are cut off from the rest of that statement from one of the Crane School students running to inform that Master Pain is in town. Ling asking, Master Pain, are you sure? Wimplo, clearly not understanding the situation, or his fighting capability against the Chosen One, sees this as an opportunity to attack. Got you now! Yay! Ling and the other student rush towards the fight and break it up, Wimplo stating that, I'm bleeding, making me the victor. As the Chosen One is knocking the dirt off of himself, the other student lets the group know that, Oh, Master Plane's meeting with the mayor! Oh, and on the closing frame, we get a close-up of the Chosen One scowling at the news. Is his lifetime vendetta against the man that murdered his family finally coming to a close? Will he finally be able to live a life of peace with Ling? Or will he be forced to suffer a never-ending string of utterly pointless attacks from Wimplo? Stay tuned to find out, because this movie is only just ramping up. So, unless you've uh, not been listening to some of the uh, other minutes I've done so far, all the voices in this movie, bar one, are all done by Steve Odekirk. Every single background character is a voice done by one man. I'm not going to praise Odekirk for his range. I mean, it's, he's clearly got one. But what I will praise him for is that he does manage to give a lot of these characters their own kind of personality and, I don't know, I guess, you know, each one of them has their own kind of quirk and it takes a good comedian or a good actor and good writer, pretty much probably all of those things to really take a world and and flush it out with so many weird and wonderful characters and to keep mentally track of a lot of these things. Odekirk has stated in the commentary that there's like, you know, thousands of edits of this film and one of the things he found was that being able to edit anything and change these characters' voices because he's not having to worry about matching dubs definitely gave him some license to just play around in this world and just come up with some weird and wonderful things. And if nothing else, I think that is probably one of the greatest achievements of this film. There's no real bland performance. Everything has an intent behind it, more or less. So if he's coming up with a stupid voice for a character, it's just because he's having fun, obviously. But also, you know this character because he, he yells that voice. And to a certain degree, that's actually quite a, a achievement where you can say, like, this one guy did all these voices and, you know, Master Tang doesn't sound like Wimplo, doesn't sound like um, Evil Beta. There's some similarities there, yes, but... And then you have Ling and all these other things going on and it, he still manages to take a little guy that's in this like one scene I don't think we ever see him again <laughs> he's just Mr. Bane's bad <laughs> these are the things that make me love this movie especially after watching this multiple times you know you, you're not there going oh that guy sounds like that guy that sounds like that guy that sounds like that guy and 
I'm not going to try and be overcritical. Voice acting is a skill and an art in and of itself, and there are some accomplished voice actors. I'm not going to make names, because I don't want to have the rapid fans jumping down my throat, but there are some voice actors whose range is kind of short. I could put it this way. The range is narrow if you've heard enough of their voices and you can hear those particular ticks. Some of those actors, you know, they also have also delivered some spectacularly good performances and I am definitely not going to negate any of that kind of work. I think some of these guys do deserve some of the praise, but then you listen to too much of their work and they start to sound a little bit samey, or at least you can see some of the gimmicks. I, a few come to mind, but at the same time, these guys have also done voices where it's just like, wow, I never would have picked that in a million years. I'm, I'm not using this as an example, but you also get characters, well, not characters, you also get people like, I'm going to say Mark Hamill, who got essentially typecast like most actors do into this one thing, this one role that haunted his life, essentially, to the point where he started doing voice acting because he couldn't get other jobs. And funnily enough, he went for this one particular role and the producers of that of the show were just there going, you know, we like the guy, he's a bit gimmicky, just to have him be this guy and, uh, you know, have him on the payroll. And they were umming and ahhing. They finally gave him a role for another part in this series. They ended up really actually liking his range and his characterizations. And they finally went, okay, we'll let him audition for this role. And that's pretty much the short story of how Mark Hamill became the Joker. They did not want to cast a named guy as the Joker. And then he blew them away with this with this character, and he's still performing that character to this day. God, I'm trying to remember the last time he's done it. He, he definitely performed it after he said he was going to quit doing the Joker. And I know he was the Joker in DC Lego Supervillains, and it was a great performance. So we'll probably still hear Mark Hamill's Joker as long as he's not tired of it. And he probably was tired of it after going on so many decades even kevin conroy you know he seems to they seem to have moved on from him being the being the batman and yet they keep bringing him back because his voice is so damn perfect and so yeah you know kevin conroy's done other stuff and i think he actually is a vocally talented guy and these none of these guys are the people i'm talking about when i say about you know popular voice actors who start to sound the same you, you're probably thinking of a couple but there's also these guys who just do so much range and so much good stuff it's absolutely amazing. And here's the thing, Steve Odekirk. I don't think I've ever heard him do animation apart from, like, Barnyard. <laughs> that was his show. I think he probably he might have been on Jimmy Neutron, who was, he was also involved with. I'm not sure if he was a writer on that. But the other thing I wanted to briefly touch upon is actually this fight scene. In the original movie, this was the fight scene between Sing Chen and Liu Kang. Uh, Sing Chen being Jimmy Wang Yu, who's being replaced by the Chosen One. And Liu Kang is William Plo. And forgive me if I can't remember the actor's name off the top of my head. And it does happen roughly around the same time in both movies. This was not a minute by minute reconstruction or anything like that. This is not, you know, Gus Van Sant's Psycho, which didn't even properly line up. But either way, you can see how much Odekirk took inspiration from the original movie uh, in regard to plot beats. The beginning is entirely new. He's chopped out enough of the stuff from the old movie that either couldn't be used or probably wasn't funny enough or didn't work with his story. Especially the death of Liu Kang is a complete one exception that is absolutely absent from Kung Pao. There is actually one deleted scene, like full deleted scene that Odekirk filmed it's interesting that this is a, this is a fight scene where nothing really happens, and it's fine. It's perfectly good. It's it's a it's Odekirk. It's funny, and just this idea that this one guy believes himself so much that he can delude himself into thinking he's winning when he's clearly getting his ass kicked. I can't help but think about the U.S. presidential election. Am I saying that Wimplo is a certain person? Well, he's not orange enough. Probably wouldn't like the uh, being compared to an Asian person as well. <laughs> but the actual fight scene in the original movie is pretty good. And it, it feels a little bit sacrilegious that it got cut down so much. But that being said, there's plenty of fighting between uh, Sing Chen and Liu Kang in Tiger and Crane Fists. So if you want to see more of that action, 
go check out the original movie. It is on YouTube. I, I honestly, I would highly recommend it. It is actually a really good film, and yeah, I keep bringing this up. But you can see why Oda Kirk um really fell in love with this movie and fell in love with these characters. I I was planning to say more, but I think that is it about this fight scene. I mean, the squeaky shoes are still a thing. It's uh, it, it's interesting that Ling is the one that's you know there to break these two people up. There's this kind of love triangle in the original movie and it's to a certain degree still here although in this movie it's definitely more of a Ling chosen one thing as opposed to Ling chosen one Wimplow even though Wimplow clearly you know is in love with either way so we'll get to the audio commentary and this is where Steve gives the identity away of the Wimplow body double the best body double we had for Wimplow was Pierre our second AD down in Mexico and uh, Pierre's a great guy, and, and he, we just kept making him take his clothes off and put on Wimplow's clothing because he, he body doubled him the best. Plus, he talks about those squeaky shoes. Uh, the squeaky shoes w- was a choice that we had to kind of limit because at first he was squeaking too, too much in the mix. We pulled it down a little bit. In the what are they really saying section, the Chosen One reveals his body shaping secrets. I'm really quite fat. I hide my blubber in a very tight blouse. Will you be my protege? And finally, in the audiobook, I, I, again, so many to choose from, but it has to be this one. Try my nuts to your fist style. So that is it for this minute. Uh, thank you for listening. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, all that usual things. I am on Simplecast. I am on Apple, Google, Spotify, pretty much every major podcasting network except Amazon because they refuse to even acknowledge my existence. Not that it's fine. I mean, let's face it, once you've got Apple, that's the one you need. That's what most people have. Ugh, Apple. Oh yeah, this is also going up on YouTube, which has the pretty visuals. Please like, and comment, subscribe on that one. And there's also, I have other videos on there. If you, this is more style, you might like some of the building vlogs, or some of the movie vlogs, or some of the gaming vlogs. I and mean, there's all sorts of different things there. Anyway, I do have Patreon. Not that anyone really, you know, throws money that way. I also have Ko-Fi, which also no one you know, throws money that way. But that's okay. Just just keep listening, and I hope you enjoy yourself and keeping well as we're closing out the hellscape of a year. So see ya.